Hi everybody, I've had an absolute blast recording your championship intros on audio and also on video. And for those of you that didn't know, the videos can be done special exactly the way you like them because these are green screens and we can do them with a scene behind me. Do you want a fighting scene? Do you want a beach scene? Do you want a race car scene? Any scene you want, we can give it to you. It's your theme and my pleasure. Just write our offices and we will answer you with the exact fee involved and how it'll get done. So here we are, and now it's time, and it's your choice. Cheers! To the shores of Malibu where the waves are pumping, to the Great Wall of China where I hope nobody's jumping, and back to the streets of Edmonton, Canada where the UFC is coming, we are live. This is It's Time Radio, the show where we talk about what you think about. No holds barred radio, folks. Everything's talked about. Politics, sex, drugs, rock and roll, theater, UFC, movies, TV. We got it to talk about, and you're here to listen to it. So I'm here with TJ DeSantis, my co-host and producer. TJ, how are you? I was hoping you weren't going to say that we talk about politics because that's all I can hear about these days. We'll touch on it a little bit today. We won't go too crazy, but we got to talk a little bit of politics. The election just happening next week, and everybody get out there and vote. Get out there and vote. You care about this country. You care about your opinions. They don't mean anything unless you get out there and vote, okay? True. One vote can change the world. Many votes can change the country. Who knows? Anyway, that's the way it's supposed to be, right? <laughs> that's right. Not just four or five states with electoral votes, but that's a whole other conversation. Oh, my goodness. We're already going down that path, Buff. Nope, not going down that path at okay, all. Good. Not going down that path at all. Um, a lot of politics has been talked about this week. Uh, Joe Rogan had uh, former President Trump on. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger endorses Kamala Harris. Uh, on and on and on. Lots of things have going on. So, everybody, pick your champion. That's all I can tell you. The only poll I want to talk about is the one that's behind Vanessa Demopoulos right now. <laughs> yeah, we're going to talk about that, too. So before we do, let's bring on our guest for today, a friend of the show. She's a little monster. Vanessa Demopoulos. How are you, Vanessa? I'm amazing. How are you guys? It's so, it's so awesome to be here. Oh, it's very cool to have you on the show. You know, former LFA champion, fighter personified. A submission grappler, you name it, you do it. It's all out there. You're competing in the submission grappling match against Kia Jackson at the PGF on November 8th. Um, this match is for the PGF Women's Flyweight Championship. So here you go, going for another championship yourself. Um, you've been really outspoken about your love of jiu-jitsu and helping this work grow. You're a jiu-jitsu black belt. You stayed ap- active in the grappling scene while fighting in the UFC. You're nonstop. You do commentary for events like Five Pass Invitational. Very impressed by your credentials, Vanessa. It's very good to see you stepping out off the mat, behind the microphone, doing what you do. But as far as uh, your match against Kia Jackson uh, coming up on November 8th, um, your MMA record's 11 and 6, your UFC record's 5 and 3. What's your submission record? Yeah, um, I don't know my submission record, but as far as uh, my UFC record goes, my last fight definitely was um, I got fouled where the commission actually it said and told me, yes, we understand that you got fouled and uh, there's nothing we can do to overturn that decision. So that one still stings me a little bit. So going out here on the PGF against Kaya Jackson, I am 100% coming with some heat, coming with some fire, you know, because I got something to prove to everybody and show them exactly what type of a grappler I am. Hey, real quick on your last fight, the I mean, they had the replay, and that was in the apex. D- did they even review it? Because your opponent, it looked like she had her, her fingers in the, the wrist part of your glove, which obviously, you know, is, is not legal. D- do you know if they looked at it real time and tried to make any sort of judgment call at that time, Vanessa? Yeah, I mean, real time, I was literally screaming at the referee that she's in my glove. Um, and then she got caught four fingers deep on 4k, right? Like, yeah. I don't understand how the commission didn't call that a no contest. And then we did appeal it. And then they went back and looked at it and said, yes, um, you did get fouled. We see that you got fouled, but we're not going to overturn the decision. They're like, but did you see what happened in the following weeks? Because now we're calling fouls really quickly. I'm like, I don't yeah, care how- about what's happening with other people. Like, yeah. what about my terrible decision? So right. it's really rough that they, they see it, they acknowledge that it happens, and they will not do anything about it to, to turn it over. And I guess that's the problem, you know, with the sport of jiu-jitsu in mixed martial arts is it, it 
you have to wear gloves, obviously. It's part of MMA, but the, the gloves do change that grappling game so much. And I guess it's not going to be a problem, though, against Kaya Jackson, no gloves. No gloves against Kaya Jackson. So she can grab my wrists all she wants, which is great. But um, there's a chance of escaping there um, accordingly. So, yes, and I'm really looking forward to this match at PGF. I love PGF. Um, I love grappling in general. I just love jujitsu. It's one of my favorite arts. Outside of punching people in the face. I love that, too. (laughs) Well, I mean, once you've done that, it's hard not to love it. (laughs) Unless you're the one getting hit too much. You know, yeah. That's, that's no, I like right hitting there. other people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So um, as far as like fighting in the UFC and mixed martial arts, you're still going to compete in UFC, right? A million percent. Yes. I just, I don't have any fights coming up and um, I have this superpower called ADHD, right? So I just love being active and I love like doing a million things at once. And that's why you catch me commentating. You'll catch me being a reporter. um, And then you'll also catch me actually actively competing in things like jujitsu. Right. Right. Yeah. I I think that your, your career, because as far as age, may I ask you, Vanessa, how old you are now? I identify as 28. Okay, but... <laughs> that's fine. If you're being 28, you've got a lot of years ahead of you. <laughs> well, she has. She has the. Actually, I'm actually 30, 36. But I, yeah. And, I'm well, you look 28. How's that? Well, well she has the energy younger. level uh, of a nine-year-old on pixie sticks. To be honest with you, so. <laughs> yeah. Sugar. You know, <laughs> when I announce you in the octagon and I watch you fight, when you're competing at 115 pounds in UFC. I know this match coming up is 125. Um, are you going to be significantly smaller than your opponent since you're going up in weight? 100% no. Um, no. Actually, normally in between my fight camps, I weigh around 150. So 150? I'm, yeah, I'm a big bitch. Okay. <laughs> I didn't say that. I didn't say that. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I get thick. Your girl gets thick. So, um which is nice. This time I actually tried to keep my weight a little bit lower. So I right. won't have a really rough weight cut for something like jujitsu. Yeah. Th- that's crazy to me because you, you're basically saying that you walk around at a weight that women don't even really have a weight class for to fight in yet. You fight in the smallest weight class. I mean, outside of, you know, Adam weight, which isn't in the UFC, but yeah, that, that's a, that's quite a swing, Vanessa. Thank you. I'm extremely strong for my size. So even when I do gain weight, it doesn't look like I'm super heavy because it just kind of goes to my muscles and I wear it well. I mean, I like to think that I wear it well, but um, yeah, I get fucking heavy, which is nuts. It's quite yeah, the weight cut. Yeah, yeah, I definitely need like a full camp when I'm getting ready to fight in the UFC. That's that's crazy. Yeah, that is crazy. But, you know, the... Um, well, getting back to the PGF for a second, they're trying to ch- to change the sport, providing a platform for athletes like yourself to make a living, right? Good fees. So where do you see professional grappling going in the next few years? You see it l- really becoming like sustainable income for people to make full, full, um, full life needed income just from grappling competition. Yeah, I think if you're a good competitor and you're out there on the scene, there are so many organizations now that are really starting to grow in the jiu-jitsu community. And I couldn't love it more because once upon a time, being a jiu-jitsu athlete, it was like you're making the decision that you're really not even going to make money. This is just a passion sport. And now I feel like it's really becoming something that people can get paid, you know, between the PGF. You know, the FPIs, the ADXCs, like, they're starting to pay grapplers a pretty decent salary almost, I can say, because we're starting to see the same competitors being really consistent on these grappling scenes. Very cool. That's what I want to hear. You know, because it's the nice thing about it is when you think about it is that you're competing in an event that basically you train like every week. Yeah. So you're you're not getting hit. Right. I mean, you're, you're going through some rough stuff, but you're not getting hit. Bottom line. So as far as like one, of the, I'm sorry, my <laughs> I, got, I can't turn off. My Busy phone. buffer. It's all right, buff. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Who the heck was talking? You know, to me we're, anyway? we're not getting hit, but uh, we are trying to break each other's limbs in half. So, yeah. you know, there's a catch there. Right. It's like I'm not getting punched in the face, but I'm I, I'm trying to break someone's arm. Yeah. Right. Speaking about breaking someone's arm, you know, and um the UFC in Abu Dhabi this last weekend, Mm -hmm. which uh, as we can revert to talk about UFC here a little bit, 
uh, one heck of a show. There's no question. Oh, I, I much, much, much more than I think a lot of people expected when you really get down to it. Uh, but of course, in the Robert Whitaker fight, when uh, Cosmot grabbed, you know, put his arm around him, and we've yeah, seen the this happen many, many times. What did you call it, T TJ? It's like a face crush. Yeah. A fa what yeah, did you call it? Face crank. Right, face right, crank. Yeah. right, right, right. Yeah, he crushes teeth in. <laughs> so, with that being said, uh, brutal injury. Yeah. And everybody worries about getting hurt, but, you know, Vanessa, with well, all the grappling you do, do you worry about stuff like that? I mean, when you're in that position, do you ever worry about that? It was such a freakish accident. Does it ever occur to you or you don't even think about it? It's like if you get hurt, you get hurt. I think it depends on the situation, right? So when it comes to jujitsu, um, that to me is something that I do for fun, for passion. But if I'm in the UFC octagon and uh, something like that happens to me, I actually have a conversation with the referees prior to fighting where I tell them, like, listen, it's gonna, it might get messy. Please do not stop this fight, right? Because my mindset is if I break it, it's already broken. I might as well continue on through and see what I can accomplish to try to turn things around, right? Um, if it breaks, it breaks. Keep going. And that's like a very savage mindset that I probably don't recommend. Um, I don't think it's a healthy mindset. It's just my mindset. But uh, I think that when it came to, like, Robert Whitaker's situation, the teeth broke immediately. Like, yeah. we saw him tap so quickly that it was like, what even happened there? And there was no hope for escape. Let's just say, for example, he did try to use that mindset of, like, it's already the damage is done, continue through. That choke was so tight. That crank was so tight. There was no escaping it, you know? So I think that that was, there was nothing to do but to tap in that scenario, um, no matter what the damage was. It, it was also sort of misleading because a lot of people thought that he had broken his jaw, but it was really just his lower teeth. And apparently it was like a, a previous injury that he had uh, to his, his teeth. So they were kind of more susceptible. TJ, to breaking for my benefit, like clarify that a little more, so I know. Yeah, it, yeah. So like, it, a lot of people thought it was like his lower jaw that broke, yeah. but it, it wasn't. It was just the the teeth in the bottom row uh, broke off. It got crushed in. I don't even know if they actually like cleanly broke. Um, but yeah, it, it's not uh, a, a situation where he had to go get his jaw wired shut or anything. It was it was a uh, a dental injury more than it was like a man mandible uh, sort of injury. And so he said that it was a previous it's not as injury. As, I'm sorry to talk over you, Vanessa. Yeah, yeah. We're saying it's not as serious of, a, of an injury as was I mean, it's important. serious. His, his teeth were basically we're pushed in. But, yeah, it's not something where he's going to have to have his jaw wired shut and avoid contact for a very long time. It was an injury to the teeth and not the jaw. Before I was initially – thanks for telling me that because I was wondering if this was a career ender mm -mm, for no, him. No, no. Even, okay, even if it was a broken jaw, I don't think you could stop Robert Whitaker. <laughs> no, I don't think you can either. That's like trying to tell Vanessa Demopoulos she, she needs to sit still for 45 minutes. It's not, not ah! happening. <laughs> <laughs> I mentioned it earlier, Vanessa. You have a you have a pole behind you. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Look, 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 look. Look what I do. Yeah. Woo! See, look at that, Buff. We'll we'll make sure that's I all in frame. I think you need amazing there, but... strength and, and core control and everything to work that pole. Well, t t tell Bruce what how you describe your jujitsu style. My, my background in jiu-jitsu is actually pole dancing. So, and people don't understand what that even means, but if you ever look up competitive pole dancing, it is genuinely like one of the most insane sports. I mean, it's Cirque du Soleil at like the highest level of performance in competition form. And I used to compete in pole dancing before I started jiu-jitsu, so. Oh, really? That's why I'm um, in the strawweight division, uh, according to the Performance Institute. I am the strongest in the division. I have the most muscle mass for that division. And I will definitely give a lot of that credit to pole dancing because of all of the calisthenics that it takes. I believe it. So I have to ask, um, ever do it professionally? <laughs> yeah. She wrote yeah. a book. I, mean, I, mean, oh. I, was a, I was a stripper for 13 years. Yeah. She wrote the book on, on dancing. I literally wrote the book called Stripper Bible. Yes. So was the book called From the Pole to the Cage? <laughs> I need to write that one though. You got it. Use it. That, that's yes. the that's the memoir when when yes. the career is over. You know. Yes. 
It's, it was uh, it was really cool. But yeah, so I, I did I did the the I was a stripper right in the club, but then I also did pole dancing competitively when it was first becoming like an art, right? Because it wasn't always that. It, this is like it being an art. Like people go to pole dancing, like they go to yoga. That's no. very 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 new. That's very recent. Yeah. So I was one of the first um, pole instructors on the scene and one of the first people to start doing competitions. We're going to see it in the Olympics. If it's not, you know, in the next games, it'll it'll definitely be there before our lifetime's over. You yeah, know, you hopefully breakdancing can ruin that, that for everybody, for all the dancing sports. <laughs> right. <laughs> Freaking well. Australia and their breakdancing, man. they got to ruin it for everyone. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Okay, let's get back to Abu Dhabi for here for a second. What a show that was, the, the, the competitors on the show, the names on the show. I always love when people say, oh, this card is not that great or whatever, because it, usually that turns out to be just a really, really good card. And from top to bottom, this was an excellent card. Yeah, but I don't know of, who was saying this card wasn't good, Buff. I thought oh, this I, was on a the stack internet, card. You know, you Twitter, you read this when you comments. Oh, I see all these stay comments. Stay away from I, that. I, I, I like crazy. They don't know what yeah. they're talking about. Right. I'm sorry to see fighters get hurt. I hate to see mm. Robert get hurt. I hate to see Rafael Dos Anjos injure a knee which was not the knee that he injured previously it's a new injury for him so i hope he comes out okay hope it's not a torn acl um has the word come out on that yet no i haven't he heard anything on on the damage yet and then uh shara shara Mar magomedov oh yeah <laughs> are Man. you kidding me are a double back fist like I'm... what is that dude he turned into a freaking tornado and yeah. then just like knocked him too cold that was i have never seen a double back fist uh like that ever I even no. went over to Dana and Hunter, and I said, that's just like the most amazing move. That'll be a highlight reel forever. Yeah. Uh, he, he trained with it, trained, trained to throw it. Uh, when I was kickboxing, that was one of my favorite moves was spinning back fist, but I never did. I hit a ton of people with it, but I never threw a double. Well, you know, it's, it's one, it, but I never threw it. It's one of those things where if it were in the UFC video game and hadn't happened, I would be like, oh, this is stupid. That's not a real thing. Well, it's got to be sure enough, now. Apparently it is. They put Shar in the game unless he's already in the game. They got to add this to his repertoire. Now. Oh yeah, no, that's uh, and also too. I mean, Vanessa, we've seen things like this in the grappling world uh, where we'll, we'll see a, a move that we've never seen before, and then all of a sudden everybody's doing like the buggy choke. Like the no one had ever seen. Yeah. Yes, the buggy one is like does everywhere it, now. And then all of a sudden, now it's a real move, and people start to implement that into their games. Yeah, that's how leg locks even became a thing because that's why it's like the new generation of grappling. Yep, totally. Totally. Uh, Shara's brother uh, was in the first row behind me during the mm -hmm. show. Man, what a beast. They they both look so mean, right? Yeah. But they're both so nice. It's funny it's, how that works. It's funny how that works. And we talked about this before. Shara got um, hired to do a, a motion picture. Mm -hmm. As sure a villain. A, pardon me? As a villain. As a villain. Well, of course, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and, and he really doesn't need to say very much. He just needs to show that unique face of his, which will get hired like crazy. Now, a question I have for you, TJ, can he see out of his eye? I don't believe so. Okay. And there's no, and, and what is this I read? And is this, again, I don't know what's true or not on the internet anymore with mm. AI and everything else, whether it's videos or otherwise, but they say now that he cannot fight in the United States. Yeah. He would have a real hard time getting a license here uh, in the States with wow. uh, that impaired vision. Um, but I mean, that's not uh, all that, you know, rare. And maybe we'll see that change. I mean, obviously Bisping has a glass eye now, but he, he couldn't really see out of that eye long before uh, he had it removed. Um, yeah. I heard that he went into his title fight with yeah. the one eye. Yeah, yeah I don't think the commission people, knew that. The, the yeah, commission didn't know it. that. Yeah, yeah. but but yeah. my point is, is we're, we're starting to see a precedent for maybe the athletic commissions to think differently uh, about that. You know, because uh, if if Bissing was doing it when you know he became a champion, and you know Shar is doing it now, uh, you know maybe we need to kind of further examine whether or not uh, it's that big of a deal. I mean, obviously you want to be able to see out of both eyes, but if you don't have vision there and you're still a High level premier elite fighter, let him fight. It's the it's the depth perception right. that uh, that you're lacking when you can only see out of one right. eye, right? Like you don't have any depth, which mm. is insane to me that Shara is as good as he is with one eye. Yeah, but human well, beings we acclimate, right? We evolve. Like if you are blind, you generally have insane hearing. You know what I mean? So like uh, obviously his you know disability, if you will, is. 
uh, he's adapted to become incredibly uh, able. And, you know, I, I think if he wants to fight, I think the, the concern is this. Obviously, you know, Bisping, he lost an eye from fighting. If you only have one good eye, do you risk that? And I think that's on the the, the person themselves. I don't think that's up to a commission uh, to decide whether or not uh, you want to take that risk. Because at the end of the day, it's fighting. Fighting's dangerous. Bruce, yeah, if, well, you lose, if you lose your vision, are you still fighting? What was that? I said, if you lose your vision, are you still fighting? <laughs> both eyes, one eye. Yeah. <laughs> Not both eyes. <laughs> oh, I bet you're still throwing without any eyes, Buffer. You'll, you'll, you'll still make it a fight. Yeah, I'll still keep swinging. <laughs> hey, listen, if it's a matter of survival, you do what you got to do. Of course. And if you need a few bucks, I guess you got to do what you got to do. It works both <laughs> ways, right? Totally. All right, the other standouts from the show, Lerone Murphy, has went over Dan Ige. Very, very powerful fighter in Dan Ige. That was, that was a pretty strong performance. Yeah. Uh, I hated that decision. I thought that da- Dan Ige won that fight. In fact, when the referees called a like, unanimous decision, I was like, oh, thank goodness. They actually are going to go for Dan. It's not a split decision. And then they went the other direction. I was like, why? How? And that's a personal opinion. But I was really sad for poor Dan Ige that night. It's one of those ones that I had to keep a straight face when I was announcing the winner. You know, got to put on my poker face because trust me, I get some of these cards. Happens almost every show. There's at least one fight. I'm like, really? Seriously? Yeah. Yeah. You know, add that up again. Blah, 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 whatever. An earlier fight, uh, Kennedy and Zechiku, um, Chris Barnett. People said Chris hurt himself during my introduction, uh, jumping up and down. That was not the case. I spoke to Chris. Uh, after the fight, he said when he hurt his uh, hamstring is that when he did the spinning um, heel kick, uh, he usually puts his hand down and, and, you know, mounts himself on the ground for like a two-point stance throwing the kick. Mm-hmm. And he didn't do that. And he said his, his hamstring went. So that's Yikes. when he hurt it. Hamstring injuries, they can be a, a problem, too, for a long time. His was brutal. Yeah. And he was walking fairly well when I saw him later that night, but... Uh, he couldn't even get down the stairs. I mean, that was really a, that was really a tough one for him. Yeah, it's a massive muscle, you know. It's very hard yeah, to feel. Exactly. Well, the crowd was really exciting. Abu Dhabi, sold-out crowd. Um, talk, rumors, whatever. We could be there two to three times next year. Yeah, yeah. I believe it. That crowd was awesome. I was there um, in Abu Dhabi, and I was in the crowd, and, like, they are so excited to, like, be watching these fights live. You know, I, I feel like... The U.S. is a little bit spoiled, you know, sometimes uh, in the crowd, like, you know, they start doing the, the like weird chirping things that they do and yeah. just being distracting. But in Abu Dhabi, they were like genuinely pumped. They were excited. They were cheering for their fighters like they were giving directions from the crowd. It was just awesome. It was an awesome arena to be in. And the energy was correct. I loved it. It was it was exciting, that's for sure. I finished up. It's a sixteen hour flight. There, I fly Ooh. into Dubai and then take an hour plus drive over to uh, uh, to Abu, Abu Dhabi. Dhabi. Um, literally, I st- I was up for twenty six hours uh, between Dang. that day and getting back to the plane because I got back to the hotel and two hours later I had to leave for the airport. Right. Yeah. So I couldn't even go to sleep and then finally got on the plane. So don't cry for me, Argentina. You know I'm <laughs> flying business class. It's all good, but it definitely took me a couple days. <laughs> to get over the uh, the jet lag coming back from Abu Dhabi. And now I'm off to Edmonton, Canada, Thursday night. I can't, not even celebrating Halloween. Walk oh, out dang. of my house here at uh, quarter to six to go to the airport. And there's going to be a few kids that are going to be ticked off at me. I'm not answering the door to hand out the candy. You know, and it sucks because like, if you put a bowl out with candy, you're going to have one kid just take all the candy. Oh, and I've done it, that right? before and it's all gone within... You know, 45 minutes or whatever. 45 minutes? More like 45 seconds. Yeah, Jackpot. I know. I know. <laughs> Just sorry. Out of town. What can I say? Anyway, I hope you guys have some fun plans. Well, the, the parties for Halloween were last weekend, right? You, generally, they're the weekend before. But, you know, yeah. there's never a bad time to have a Halloween party. That's true. I feel like Halloween is like, it like lasts a really long time. And Christmas starts right before Halloween happens. And then, like, we just, like, keep rolling it over until February, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, like, so Disney, Disneyland here in Southern California has a, a Halloween party that they put on a couple days a week throughout the holiday season. Apparently the, hol- or the Halloween season, the, the, apparently the Halloween season is from August 29th to, like, November 3rd. So, yeah, uh, yeah you know. One of my favorite uh, holidays of the year, if you call it a holiday or events of the year, but uh, mm. this year, no mas for me. No mas for That's me, right, red eye flight. Uh, the flight. The fights in Edmonton, Rose Namajunas coming back against Aaron Blanchfield. 
That's a great uh, Brandon fight. Moreno against Amir Albazi. Uh, Derek Lewis, always a pleasure watching Derek get in the octagon. Never know what he's going to do, show or say. Um, <laughs> it's going to be a lot of fun. And just a lot of good solid fights. And the Canadian crowd, as always, they'll be out of their minds. Yeah, the, the Canadian fans are among the most ravenous mixed martial arts fans in all the world. I know you were talking about how Abu Dhabi brings it, but uh, Canada is, uh, they're out in force when the UFC comes to town. They are out I in feel force. Like, okay, so like, I feel like Abu Dhabi, they're like respectful. They're cheering for their athlete. I feel like Canada is just like, they're going to be throwing beer at each other, man. Like, oh, yeah. It's yeah. going to be nuts. Like, yeah. Let me tell you, I always say, swearing. <laughs> Vanessa, I always say, I've never met a rude Canadian. I just met a lot of inebriated ones, okay? Yeah. yeah, pretty much how to put it. It's one of the it. most polite countries in the world. It's so it's always a pleasure. But change for me, change for a lot of people, 40 degrees, like 37, 40 degrees. So mm-hmm. time to start ready, getting ready to travel in the cold. Yeah, that's never fun because it's like – if you're not in the cold, it's not like you have, like, gloves and a hat and all these things for the winter, right? So yep. just come prepared. Come prepared. I, and make sure that I got it ready to break out. It's 80 degrees here in L.A. I'll be going to the airport like it's 40. And uh, what can I say? That's 40 degrees about. sounds amazing. I don't know. I mean, Vanessa's from Cleveland. I'm from Minneapolis. Like, 40 degrees is not cold to us, but. I think it's, it's not, good. but I, I, I also love- got to got out of the cold for a reason True. so don't put me back i just miss it like i i don't miss like cold i don't miss like two degrees i do miss like 35 to 55 degree weather though i like that kind of weather brisk i don't mind yeah, it either. You're crispy you know <laughs> are you a baseball fan vanessa i'm not not we really to- but I, I i've been seeing all the excitement about the dodgers so i want you guys to be excited like don't let me kill the excitement we got to talk a little bit here about the Dodgers. I mean, the Dodgers is now three to one in the series, um, two to one or three to oh, three to one, right? Three to one, yeah. Three to one, yeah. The Dodgers. Yeah, by the time this airs, night. it might already be over. Who knows? Yeah, by the time this comes on, it could be over. But you know, the things that come out of it, uh, Otani, how straight, how strong the Dodgers are, and you know that fifty-fifty ball, TJ, you saw what it sold for, right? No. Guess. Uh, highest three point, ever for a baseball. Three, three, oh, highest three three point five. Four point four million. Okay, a Taiwan uh, business uh, company and businessman bought it. I was in the ballpark. Yeah, well, Literally. that was in the ballpark too. <laughs> Let me tell you one thing. I mentioned this before. The kid who had his hands on it that didn't get mm. the ball. All that yeah. story. Put the injunction against the selling. If I was the guy that got the ball and sold it, I would send a quarter million dollars to that kid. Yeah, for his college education. Yeah, right. I think that's fair. I think it's completely fair, and it's not a, it's not a, it's not an admission of guilt. It's not an no. admission of anything. It's survival of the fittest. Whoever got the ball, but it's like this young man, fourteen, fifteen, however old he is, man. There's not going to be a day that goes by for the rest of his life he's not going to think about this day, right? You know? And also and in like, any other situation, Buff, when it's not a collectible flying into the stands that's worth multiple multiple millions of dollars. You're an asshole if you're not giving the ball to the like the the closest kid. Totally. You know what I, I mean, mean, if it's just another ball, give it to the kid. Yeah. And then you saw what happened in last night's game. These uh, uh, New York fans. Um, I saw the guy rip the glove open and yeah. take the ball out of the glove. Yeah. Yep. yep. Like uh, he grabbed homie's hand. He grabbed his arm and then ripped the freaking glove open. Like, what are you doing? That's well, he, assault. He, he grabbed his arm. The other guy grabbed his other arm. They ejected both guys and supposedly banned him for the season. But they I'm need to sorry. be banned for life, Bob. Life. Yeah. But I'm sorry. That's assault. Yeah. Mookie Betts Try doing that to a UFC athlete, by the way. Assault. They could have broken his wrist. Uh, absolutely. In, in the absolutely biggest game, uh, you know, uh, at, at that level. Again, don't do that to a UFC athlete. Fans that are on the walkway, you're going to find out uh, uh, <laughs> the, hard the hard way. way it happened happen. to Armand Sarukian. I remember. Yeah. Punching athletes on his way to the cage. That's yep. the way to go get into a fist fight. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, but he also had to pay for that himself. So yeah, but but I I well worth the 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 payment. I think on his behalf. I think he spoke loudly with his actions for other fighters. Like, hey, do not mess with with me. Like it, it, he was defending himself, in my opinion. Yeah. yeah, I'm I'm with you. I mean, you touch me. Anybody gets touched, you have a right to defend yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Period. I mean, to whatever level you can. Unfortunately, unfortunately you got to pay for it now, too, though, financially. In this day and age, it's all about, I don't know, my my uh, 
generation when we fought, we had a beer afterwards or something. You know, now it's just repercussion, repercussion, repercussion. Yeah. So if an athlete hits a normal person, the athlete has to pay. But those normal people who ripped the ball out of that guy's glove, I'm sure they didn't have to pay any fine. No, they, they got, got banned. They, they got banned for the rest of the season, Vanessa. No, uh, did they get banned for life or the rest of the season? Because you said the rest of the season. There's two more games in Yankee Stadium this season, so I don't. Oh, I was going with you. You said banned for life. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're not banned for life, but yeah, yeah. But uh, what what kind of punishment is, you know, you're banned for the rest of the season? First off, it's like $8,000 to sit in those seats, and there's only two more games where they can sit in those seats, so their seats, Their seats were $1,000 each, they said. Uh, not that close. First uh, row. First row I mean, they, no, those may, were maybe, they had to be may, maybe, maybe they were $1,000 from, like, the actual source, but if they were secondhand market tickets, there's no way they were that cheap. Yeah. I hear you. Well, anyway, it's an exciting series. I mean, you know, they lost big last night. They'll, they'll play again tonight. We'll see what happens. But I normally I love baseball. I think it's a great sport. It's a it's a mental sport. It's a, it's a statistical sport. I played it a ton as a kid. I played little league, the whole nine yards. Um, I don't really watch it during the season, but I definitely watch the World Series, just like I watch the NBA championships. Yeah. The only yeah. season games I watch are football. You know, which I watch all the time. And speaking of football, um, week nine's coming up. I'll give my picks real quick. Uh, the Eagles are a great pick for this weekend. They're healthy. They're performing. The Raiders take the points. The Commanders, the uh, go with them to win at home. Uh, those are my three picks for the weekend. I went very well last weekend. I actually went 100 percent on Sunday. Are you a uh, are Are you a football fan, Vanessa? I'm not, but I played football in middle school, and I was the only girl in the entire league that played. Oh, my God. I bet you ran over some people. What have yeah, you not done, Vanessa? I've done a defensive middle line. Give me oh something you have not done, Vanessa. Uh, I can't whistle. Okay, there we go. Are you serious? I can't whistle at all. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> hey, you guys, know what was, was an E. coli that? breakout at McDonald's. Oh. Across, uh, did you hear about the E. coli breakout at McDonald's? Yeah. Uh, another reason to avoid food that is passed to you through a window. Yeah. Their sales went down 6.4% across the country and 24% in Colorado. Don't worry. In three months, everyone will forget. They'll, they'll come back. And also, yeah, Denny's. Yeah, forget fast. Another sign of the times, Denny's is closing 150 restaurants in the next year. Denny's is closing 150 restaurants. Well, that's, not a, that's not a grand slam. <laughs> Funny. Sorry. But Sorry. I got gotcha. you. I don't know yeah. if everybody Where's got Where's everybody going to go after they leave the bar? That's a great question. I know. Where's I hop, I guess. Places? Yeah. Yeah, but like Denny's is like the place to be, you know. Like that's where like you met up with everyone. Right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> How about a little feel good story? Um, a man, this, this man in Jersey, a sixty eight year old retired security guard. Right. He discovered a lottery ticket in his pocket from an old shirt. It was going to expire in two days. Right. Mm -hmm. He purchased it a year, almost a year before, and he never checked it. So he saw a TV announcement urging lottery players to check their old tickets, at, and he decided to check to see if he won. Mm -hmm. He won $24 million. Oh, my God, and he was just sitting on it. And, and two days later, it would have expired. Life-changing. Wow. Life-changing, personified, personified. $24 million. Can you imagine finding that two days after it expired? <laughs> God. Oh, man. I, wow. Uh, I don't know if I could uh, handle that. Be a yeah, and it was handle. like it was like almost a full year too. It was a full calendar year. Have you ever won the lottery? Like obviously not like a big drawing, but like a scratcher or anything like that, Vanessa? Uh, you know, so uh, for every Christmas, we get like this like like stack of scratches and we all just sit there and scratch them off and I don't ever remember a memorable win. My, you know, nothing bigger than like 20 bucks, which is kind of sad considering we do that every year. <laughs> yeah. My, my mom won $9,000 on, on a scratcher. That's, that's yeah. a good one. That I, was legit. I've won, I think I won a hundred dollars once uh, a couple, you know, the one and $2, but I had one time, this is going back easily 20 years ago. I had a ticket in my pocket or a ticket on my counter. Mm -hmm. And then I read the numbers and I looked and they were winning numbers. Right. The problem mm -hmm. was my ticket was from the previous lottery oh the my week God. before. Was and it like were, a big were, one, like a like Mega Millions or something? Win. Oh, OK. OK. But Got still, it. it's like <laughs> Dude, it was kind of a, like, money. oh, yay. Oh, no. That's yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Back in the day, you used to have to actually check the numbers. Now you just like scan a QR code or whatever. Yeah. yeah. They didn't have the scanners back then. It was just check the numbers and add it up. 
I had a buddy that worked at a convenience store, and the the scanner for the scratcher was right there, and he could uh, just scan the tickets before he even sold them to see where the winner was. And they'd be like, "Hey, come in here, buddy." It's not not a good story. Maybe I shouldn't. How talk is about that legal? It. It's not. Definitely not. <laughs> definitely not legal. Definitely no. not legal. <laughs> Jeez, Louise. All right, everybody, let's wrap it up. Vanessa, anything special you want to let us know about? No, I just, I'm really excited to go grapple somebody, you know? Like, I'm excited to go, like, attack people and, like, try to, like, choke them unconscious, you know? And, like, try to, like, break their ankles. Like, that's the most fun thing ever for me. One wow. person, okay. though, Vanessa. There you can go. only do it to one person, and that's Kaya oh, Jackson. Do not do sure? it to, do not I, do it to me. I please. feel like I can do it to everybody. I feel I, like I can just grab people and choke them unconscious, you know? You can, but you shouldn't. <laughs> That's yeah, but the passing only counts if there's a ref there to stop you. I know, and that's why I'm <laughs> afraid of my safety now, because I'm going to be calling this match, and I'm going to keep my distance. <laughs> All right, <laughs> TJ, what's up? Uh, you know, follow me on uh, Twitter, or not Twitter, whatever it is, Instagram, uh, at TJ DeSantis. I'll be uh, calling Vanessa's match. And uh, the entire season of PGF, it uh, starts with the draft coming up on Sunday and uh, goes all week uh, there in Las Vegas. Very cool. And for me, I will see everybody uh, from Edmonton, Canada this Saturday from the Octagon. I um, want everybody to have a fun and safe Halloween, right? Think about it. We always tell our kids, don't talk to tra- strangers, don't take candy from strangers, and what do kids do on Halloween? Talk to every yeah. stranger possible and take candy from everybody. Yeah. I mean, as long as it's uh, sealed, have at it. <laughs> Stay away from the apples. Yes, don't eat the apples. Don't eat the apples. It's a... I think that's kind of a, uh, what do you call that? Um, it's an urban myth. Urban, urban legend. Yeah, no, urban it's, myth. it's from urban Snow White. Myth. You're not supposed to eat oh, apples. Okay. I mean, yeah. to, to be honest, if someone came up and said, here, eat this apple, I would look at them like they're the craziest person in the world. Yeah, Snow so. White's a real story, you know? So, like, don't eat the apples. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, Vanessa, I won't eat the apples. Okay. All right. Yeah. Just Thank make you. sure. Okay. All right. <laughs> Unless they're Sounds green good. apples. I like green apples. Sounds good. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, Vanessa, pleasure having you on the show as always. Keep up the great work uh, from Thank Pole you. to the Cage. Keep it going. Thank you. It's amazing talking to you guys. You too, and I will see you soon in the Octagon. Always a pleasure to share the Octagon with you when you're performing at your best. Yay! Love Yay. you guys. See you soon. Cheers. Bye. Bye. <laughs>